Welcome back guys. It's a pretty nice afternoon, especially considering it's January. And I have right down here, my brand new 2020 Rift Zone 2. And behind that are some dirt trails. So let's go see how these two things get along together. So I'm out on Buttermilk Trail for this ride and review. And if you're not familiar with the area, it's one of the trails in the James River Park system. And I chose this trail for really one main reason. It's one of the trails that I ride the most often. So I'm very familiar with just about every feature on it. I know how certain sections flow. I know how to get through some of these rock gardens. And this is all my own personal experiences on my previous bike, which was the hard day. Oh yeah, I definitely like that. So general overall impressions of the bike is that I really like it. It fits me really well. The rear shock, obviously it's my first full suspension bike, but it does a great job smoothing things out, but not to the point where it kind of like dumbs down the trail. You know, you still feel like you're mountain biking. You can still feel the ground beneath you, but it takes away some of the less enjoyable things like the chatteriness on certain sections and, you know, just kind of that constant stuff that will, for me personally, beat up my back over time. So what I'll do now is just go through component by component and let you know what I think about each individual thing. We'll start with where my hands are, and that's on the handlebars. They are 800 millimeters wide, and it has a nice short stem paired with that. And that sounds like pretty wide for handlebars, and even from my own experience, I had some that were Thank 780 you. millimeters wide. Thanks. I'm and so with on. those, I actually cut those down to 760. But I think for this bike, the way that everything is designed, that 800 millimeter width is perfect. Of course, on certain trails, that width might be a little difficult. There's, you know, some around here where there's some tight trees to get through. Even on this trail, there's a couple spots like that. Uh, but I would take that width and that stability that you get 99% of the time for those couple times that you have to be careful around some trees. And staying on the handlebars, the grips are single clamp lock-ons. They're a lot like race face half Nelsons if you've ever used those. Uh, maybe a little bit more padding and they have this kind of little pattern in them that is very grippy. And I even have a set of really nice ODI lock-on grips. They're kind of their chunky ones. Uh, but I haven't even felt the need to put them on yet. You know, I, I really do like these grips. And now to the things that you access from those grips. First off for the brakes, uh, they are Shimano. They are not high-end Shimano brakes, uh, but they're not bad either. You know, I'm used to Tektro brakes, uh, and these feel a little bit better, I think, than those. One of the important things is lever positioning on these. When the bike came to me, the levers were close to the outside of the bars, so closer to the grips. And I do one finger braking, which I think most people probably do, and I was just too close to the center of those levers and I couldn't really get a lot of leverage. And I mean, my immediate thoughts were, oh my God, these brakes are terrible. But really all it took was just moving the levers inward. So gripping on the outside of the lever and you know, they have plenty of stopping power in my opinion. And then one of the other things you access from those bars is the dropper post. Uh, so this comes with a Trans X dropper post. It's 150 millimeters of travel on the large size. And, you know, it works like it should. It's got a nice lever on it. Um, it's kind of the shifter style lever because obviously on your left hand, you don't have a shifter to deal with. I will say compared to the Brand X dropper seat post I'm used to, it feels like you have to put a little bit more weight into this thing to push it down. I do not know. Uh, somebody will probably know if this is one of the ones where you can adjust the air pressure in it or not. You know, if you can, I might take a little bit of the PSI out so I'm not having to push down quite so hard on it. Uh, but either way, I mean, it still works just like you would expect it to. <laughs> Almost had a foot off there. Stayed on. And now on to the shifters and of course what they're connected to, the entire drivetrain. So this is a SRAM SX Eagle on this bike. And that's basically entry level into SRAM's 12 speed uh, group sets. So I'm coming from an NX, which is what I had on the previous bike. That was an 11 speed. They're pretty similar. The overall feel is pretty similar. You know, if I'm really trying to split hairs, I think the NX may have had a little bit more of a snappy kind of precise feeling to it. But I mean, this thing works fine. It's, it's not missed any gears. It's, it's working just like you would expect it to. And of course, you know, I mentioned in the previous video, that's an 11 to 50 tooth on the rear of this thing. Uh, I said before, you know, I think that 50 tooth is not even really necessary. You'll probably see, you know, me struggling on a hill coming up here and 
I probably did go to that 50 tooth. I don't really know. I don't, I don't count the clicks or know necessarily what gear I'm in all the time. But, you know, if you are an area that, that you have some big climbs, that, that 50 tooth is going to make a difference for sure. Now, jumping back to the seat post, you know, attached on the top of that is the seat. And the seat that it comes with is pretty good in my opinion. Um, it's, it seems like it's pretty lightweight. It's definitely not one of these big cushiony padded seats. Uh, but for me, that's not really a problem. You know, I think spend half the time probably standing the other half seated you know if you are doing really really long journeys you might want to think about replacing the seat with something more comfortable so working our way down from the seat is the frame that holds everything together obviously on this particular model it's aluminum the paintwork looks nice i will admit i'm not a fan of the red gray black color scheme and ironically my last three bikes have all had some combination of red black or gray in it uh, it doesn't really bother me that much though because I buy a bike for how it performs, not necessarily how it looks. So up front on the bike there is a RockShox Recon fork and this has 130 millimeters of travel and of course it's an air fork so you can set your pressure. You can also adjust the rebound on it. Uh, unlike my previous SR Suntour Radon, the rebound dampening is controlled a little bit differently. It's still on the bottom, one of the bottom legs of the fork, uh, but it's this little tab that you grab a hold of and you spin it. And it maybe only spins, I don't know, 180 degrees or something like that. And it clicks into each setting as you go. So it's very easy to know how many clicks you are from one end of the spectrum to the other. And it does offer you a good amount of adjustment on that rebound too, from it springing back up almost immediately to, you know, a nice slow rebound, probably slower than I think I'll ever use. Uh, but it could be handy on certain rock gardens and things like that. That's another thing. That was a big challenge on the hardtail, getting up that. So the overall feel of this fork is pretty good too. To compare it to some of the other things, like I said, I had an SR Suntour Radon. Feels pretty similar to that. Of course, that was a different fork on a different bike. That was a hardtail. This is a full suspension. So it's a little hard to really compare the two, but I don't really have any complaints about this fork. Uh, I also did ride a bike with a RockShox. I think it was a Reba on it, uh, which is higher end than this Recon. And, you know, I didn't notice really that much of a difference at all. So this is definitely a good fork. It's what you'll find at this price point on a lot of different mountain bikes. It's tried, it's tested, it's proven, and it works good. This gets really steep. <laughs> and so the other main suspension component, of course, is the rear shock. Go and this is the RockShox Deluxe Select with a debonair sleeve. And like I mentioned before, that, that shock is really, really good for a bike at this price point. It does a great job smoothing out those smaller chattery kind of bumps, uh, but you know, it doesn't make you feel like you're just kind of floating along and you know, disconnected from the trail. So now on to the things that you actually roll on. Starting with the wheels, they are Marin branded. Obviously they're 29 inch wheels. They also are 29 millimeters wide. And that is a pretty decent width. It'll allow you to run just about any width tire that this frame and fork will take. The hubs seem like they're pretty good. They spin very freely. In my first video I did on this bike in the garage, you can actually see the front wheel kind of rocking back and forth after I spun it around for a long time, you know, just kind of like a little pendulum swinging back and forth. So that shows how, how smooth those hubs are. From the hubs, we get to one of the things that I don't like about this bike, and this is really a nitpicky thing. This bike has a bolt-on axle, which is a good thing, and it is not one of the ones that has any type of quick release mechanism to it. So you actually have to put it in with an Allen wrench, and you're supposed to tighten it to a certain torque specification. And no, that's a problem for most people. It is for me because I transport this in the back of my forerunner. And the only way that the bike can fit in there is with the front wheel off. So that means any time that I get to a trail or get done at the trail, you know, I need to break out a tool to get the wheel off. Especially a lot of my rides I do during my lunch break at work. And I have an hour to do that. So any time that I'm spending messing with a wheel is time I'm not riding. One of the most dangerous switchbacks on this trail. I know there are little quick release style through axles that you can put on. I'll probably look into getting one of those for the front. And then of course wrapped around those hubs and wheels are the tires. These are V-Tire Flow Snaps. And these are really like gravity downhill tires. They are very chunky. They're extremely grippy. You know, certain flat corners, loose corners, they give you tons of grip. 
Ow, right into that. <laughs> uh, but one of the things that they don't do is roll fast. Uh, they have basically four rows of knobs that run down them, and there is not a center knob at all. Um, now, of course, that's going to contribute to the grip, but it's not going to make these fast rolling tires. And in the trails around here, you know, we're in Virginia, it's a lot of dirt and a lot of clay, and you cannot ride these trails when they're wet, it'll destroy them. Um, so, you know, a tire like this that's kind of meant for loose and wet stuff, it's not doing me a whole lot of good. Um, so I think that I may wind up replacing at least the rear tire on this with something that rolls faster. And the other kind of gripe with these tires is that they're kind of heavy too. You know, I've looked up specs on them and compared to, you know, the tires that I was running before, which were Max's Ardent tires, each one is like a couple hundred grams heavier. So between that additional weight and then of course just the style of the tire, you know, it adds some rolling resistance that is very noticeable on this bike. If I lived in an area that was, you know, I had downhill parks near me or just did a lot of downhill, a lot of shuttles and things like that, I would love these tires. But you know, tires are just one of those things where you have to find the right balance for the trails that you're riding. You can't have a fast rolling and a super grippy tire. It's just not possible. Thanks. And so in the previous video, I also had a couple people comment questioning about the weight of this bike. So I did actually weigh it. It's not a scientific way that I did it. I don't have a bike scale. I basically stepped on a scale with me holding the bike, wrote that number down, put the bike down, stepped on a scale again, wrote that number down, and did the subtraction. So this is a size large. It's still obviously set up with the stock tires, with tubes. I had my bottle cage on there, but no bottle in it. I have my pedals on, which are Nash Bar Verge platform pedals. Uh, anyway, this thing came out to be 36 pounds exactly. And to me, especially coming from a 27.5 hardtail, you know, you can feel that weight difference for sure. And of course, that may also contribute to, you know, what I kind of feel as a little bit of a sluggishness on uphills and flats and things like that, where you're really having to pedal. In terms of that weight though, I think by going with some faster rolling tires and setting it up tubeless, I think I could easily shave a pound and a half off of this thing just by doing that. So like I mentioned at the start of this video, I'm very happy overall with this bike. It has me doing things that I haven't really thought about trying or tried before. It certainly gives me a lot more confidence when I do try certain obstacles, certain downhill things, um, you know, anything that's too chunky. On certain things like rock gardens, it definitely makes those easier. With that suspension moving up and down, it's keeping that rear tire planted, keeping your power down more and also just not jostling you around quite so much. So coming up around here is a uphill little feature. Never going up it, I'm gonna try it today. All right, let's try that again. Oh yeah. Sure the bike helped me a bit. I'm sure it probably wasn't even that hard to start with. So this is kind of a little bit of a conundrum in general. You know, you get a new bike that can perform better, especially if you're looking at going hardtail to full suspension. The bike is kind of what allows you to do things you couldn't do before. And what that does, it doesn't necessarily make you a better rider, but it definitely adds enjoyment to your ride. So instead of skipping that obstacle that you've always skipped before, you know, maybe this is the thing that's gonna let you actually do it. And then once you've done it once, you can continue doing it and improving your technique on it. And for me, that's really what it's all about. It's just getting out there and having some fun, doing some features that I've never done before and just progressing. And I think really this is the perfect bike to do just that. Of course, it is nice to go out sometimes for a speed run and try to set a PR in Strava, but for a majority of the time, I'd really just like to get out there and enjoy the ride. And here comes another tough climb that you saw me going down. It's not too bad if you keep speed. There's one little spot where it's like, you just gotta go to the right a little bit. Right here is where you gotta stay right. Come on, those roots. Get a pedal strike. Keep going. And of course I will mention again the company that I bought this bike from. 
They are called Gov Velo, and they sell online. And they offer exclusive discounts to military and first responders, and also government employees. And even if you're not one of those groups, you know they still have good pricing. So buying a bike online can be a little bit of a tricky thing too. In a lot of cases, you don't know if they're just taking this box off the shelf that they got, shipping it to you. They don't really know what condition it's in. They it's just being drop shipped from another location for all you know. But with these guys, I think they did a really good job. The day after I placed my order, I got an email from them asking for my height and my weight and my inseam. And they wanted that information because they actually do a professional setup before it even gets to you. So they take it out of the box, they set up everything, they get the right air pressure in the fork, the right air pressure in the shock, they set the seat to roughly where it should be based on your height, and then they take it around, ride it around, make sure the gears are shifting right. Coming out of the box, as you probably saw in the previous video, everything was packed very well, padded very nicely. I think everything that they took off when they assembled the bike in the first place, they just put all that padding and everything back where it was supposed to go. So the actual assembly was very easy. Uh, first thing I did was put on the handlebars. That's just four bolts that hold that to the stem. Everything's already connected to the bars in terms of the brakes and the shifting levers and all that type of stuff. So you just put that on, put on the front wheel with that bolt on through axle, install the seat. And then the last thing is to put on your pedals. And I say your pedals because it doesn't come with pedals. A lot of bikes don't. Sometimes they give you these junky plastic ones that are completely useless. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people, obviously they have a pedal they like. Maybe you're clipped in, maybe you ride platforms. So whatever it is, you put on your own pedals and then you're good to go from there. So the overall buying experience with the people at GovVelo was great. Uh, I would definitely recommend them to just about anybody, and especially if you're a military or government employee, you know, why not get it through them and save yourself some money? So that was going to be the end of the video, but unfortunately, on the very next ride, disaster struck. I was at Pocahontas State Park, and I was on Moonshine Run, and at the end of that trail, there's a drop line, and you know, that drop is, to a decline so the farther the faster you go the farther you can launch it uh, so anyway i rolled up to it a couple times just to pick my line out did not really hit it with very much speed and in fact i've hit it with way more speed and gone a lot farther with a lot heavier impact on my previous hardtail uh, but anyway on this bike you know the first and only time that i did it that day landed and some loud banging noise happened and immediately after that the entire wheel is loose back here and I know it's kind of hard to see because this whole thing is moving around, but you can take my word for it. The, the wheel is actually loose and moving around. The cassette also has a lot of play in it. So something within the hub is definitely broken. So I have already gone ahead and submitted the warranty claim. You have to go through a dealer who then submits the claim to Marin. So obviously I went through GoFellow because they're the people I bought the bike from. So at this point, I do not know how soon a replacement's coming. I assume they're gonna give me an entire wheel uh, I don't know if that means I'm going to have to transfer my cassette and my brake rotor over. I assume I probably will have to do that. Um, but I will keep everybody updated on that. And this doesn't really change my opinion about the bike. I think it's still a great bike. Anytime anything is mass produced, there's going to be some sort of failure rate. So maybe this is just the unlucky one in a thousand units or something like that. So we'll see how it goes. If the, if the new part comes and that one breaks too, then maybe at that point I'll have a different opinion. Uh, but so far, I'm still loving this bike. So as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see how this whole situation actually plays out, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified uh, when the next video is posted. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you again soon with an update on this.